All right, let's touch down to Orlando, Florida, straight into Team Zoo. The press conference has just happened, and uh, this guy was up on stage. There's been a whole bunch happening there, including the arrival of the great Kostya Zoo into the Team Zoo camp. It's been some time. Glenn Jennings, welcome. G'day, Javen. It's always good to chat with you, mate, from downtown beautiful Florida on a sunny afternoon. As all managers are doing it tough. Look at this. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm making the most of this one, mate. <laughs> Days on the shovel are gone. Look at Indeed. this. Indeed. <laughs> mate, looking at Tim, he's looking very laser focused. And it looks to me like there's almost like, is it a redemption to the US or just a point to prove? But he's he's definitely locked in the zone. What are you seeing? There he is. I think he used the word vengeance a few times, mate. This for him is his opportunity to show everyone that, hey, yep, we had a, a mishap along the way, uh, an unfortunate circumstance with a very sharp elbow, and uh, that has not in any way, shape or form changed our positivity to go forward. So we just hit the reset button, mate, and uh, I think you're going to see a, a much more um, and even more improved Tim Zoo come Saturday night. What'd you take away from seeing Backroom for the first time? Oh, he's been here a couple of days. We've seen him around a bit. He's not as tall as I expected him to be, which is uh, interesting, but um, very quiet, very subdued, very uh, workmanlike, as you expect with the, a lot of the Soviet fighters. Um, but look, he's a tough guy. We know it's a tough fight. They all are at this elite level, mate. So there's no... There's no real thought anymore of, oh, we've got an easy one. There's no such thing. This is a world title, the IBF world title, and it um, deserves the respect, and so does Backroom. But I'm sure in the ring, Tim Zoo will uh, take care of all of those categories to take that belt home. Is there anything you've seen that we should look for when the fight's on that you can see that Backroom's his, his strongest points are? Oh, look, it's been, it's been talked about a little bit here this week. He's a, he's a big guy, and he likes to fight from outside. Um, uh, he, he's he's not what I, I would consider to be one of the fastest guys around. Um, but look, the reality for me, such a supporter and fan of Tim Zoo, is that until you get in the ring with Tim Zoo and you see what he does and the pressure he brings, there's not many guys that can adapt to that. And Backram's never been in the ring in his entire career with someone like Tim Zoo. Tim says that regularly, doesn't he, at his press conferences, that whole, they, they always think they've got me sorted out until they're in there and then it's like too late. So uh, oh, look at some of the, yeah, look at some of the big guns, Tony Harrison, Brian Mendoza. They afterwards are the first to come on the microphone at the post fight press conference and say, Jesus, I didn't expect that. I, I didn't see that coming. I had no idea Tim Zhu fought with such pressure. It's, it's relentless. And the truth is, he doesn't give you an opportunity to react to consider, to adjust, to all those things that most fighters get to do and are used to, Tim Zoo takes that from you and you've just got to cope. And that's where he wins his fights. He just over overwhelms them with those those skill set that he's got. Well, there's definitely that big fight feel for Tim here in Australia, driving past the pubs, which we really haven't seen a lot of over the years of um, Tim Zoo fight on this weekend. The posters are starting to come out. The signboards are on the side of the road. So we haven't really seen that in boxing outside of uh, a zoo for a while. So it, it is nice to see that, isn't it? It's so true. We were just talking about that today. Uh, so many of my mates in Newcastle have said, oh, how good's this? The, the pubs are putting this fight on. And I've got, I've got to be honest, it's been a decade mm -hmm. since we've seen the pubs taking up subscriptions for pay-per-view. And, and there's literally in Newcastle, there's there's every second pub has taken it. So it's it's wonderful to see the engagement and the Aussie public getting behind our guy. And um, he's going to certainly bring the excitement to boxing. And that's, and that's the hook, isn't it? Yeah. Tim Zoo's the sort of guy, you know, you're going to get value for money. Yeah. And seeing him on the press conference today too, he saw, he had a bit of lip about him, which is good. Sometimes <laughs> he just plays Mr. Ca casual cool, but today he was, he had a bit of spice and a bit of tang on some of his words, which is nice to see. Yeah. It's been a little bit of back and forth between him and back from during the week, back from come out and said, Tim talks too much. And, He's got too much to say and blah, blah, blah. And Tim says, well, you know, um, of course we're going to fight in the ring, but let's have a little bit of fun and games in the build up. stuff. And it, it's all good. It's all, there's no disrespect between either of them. It's just part of what we do and part of the entertainment side of boxing. Now, without a doubt, one of the highlights from that press conference was the early arrival of uh, the one and only <laughs> and the greatest to ever lace a glove, Kostya Zoo. Uh, surprised the boys a few hours early and, uh, 
That was pretty awesome to see. A for Tim, but B even more so for Nikita. Eleven years, and you could see the you could see the joy, which was which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I told the boys Costa was coming, you know, after the press conference, and I'd bring him over to the rooms. Yeah, and uh, yeah. of course, um, unbeknownst to them, I, he was not that far away, and so I took the boys into the press conference, and then I slipped out the door, and I, Cos and I walked into the hallway, and you have to turn right to go into the press room. Tim was in the back under behind the curtains, but. Nikita was perfectly placed with his back to us, but all the media looking at us, they didn't know. They had no clue. And so me and Kat Costa just casually strolled in, and um, there's Nikita, and he's turned around because all the media lights and flashes, and he's turned around. There's his dad after 11 years, and it was really it was really cool, really cool to see. So knocked that little uh, reunion over quickly and said, okay, mate, before Tim gets up, let's shoot out the back. And Tim was looking at his phone, as they do, so we snuck in the back of Tim, and I just went over and leaned over the seat to distract him. I said, mate, is everything okay? You all set for this? He said, yeah, I'm just having a look at some stuff. And Costa grabbed him as he does on the trapezius and squeezed it. And he goes, oh, Christ, Papa's here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was really a wonderful outcome, the boys, to get the old man's here, and he's loving it. He's doing – he's been really great. We've, I've got him loaded in the media left, right, and centre, and – He's, he's living his, uh, his dream again. Do you think there's, uh, from what I saw with the interview with Ben Damon and um, and Kostya and Tim and stuff like that, I, I, I mean, I, I saw him um, have that bit of a glow about him too, the same glow that I feel like Tim had. Like it's almost like there's, I don't know, it's family, right? That's what happens. But there's almost like he's around family, he's around boxing, he's around his old life sort of, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Look, it's been... 25 odd fights since he's seen Tim fight live, and uh, he's he's missed a big chunk of Tim's life, you know, and that happens, you know, that's family. That sometimes they don't always work out. Costa lives in Russia, and he's doing his thing, but he's he's Tim Zhu today's a mature man, and Tim handles his father's huge presence and huge imposing figure that he is in boxing. Uh, five years ago, Tim wasn't up for that, but today he's. He's all over it. And now that we can enjoy the fact that we've got that, that legacy and that amazing um, opportunity to have Costa about with us. So it's all positive, mate. There's just, it's a great feeling. I'm so pleased that they get to, to do that with him. And I'm happy for myself because one of my good mates I get to hang out with for a few days and I might not get the chance to see him again for quite a while. So, yeah, it's exciting and wonderful. What sort of, I know there's no official role for him, but good luck trying to hold him back, I think, in the lead up. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think he will say? Because, I, and you know what? One thing that was thinking about today was you always have that, you have the huddle before you walk out and there's going to be something said from you always, and it's always yeah. great. But to yeah. have the posture in that huddle too before you go out, I'm thinking like, surely, like there's got to be some stuff from him at some point. Like he, he won't just sit there quiet and go, you do you. Yeah, look, he's very, he's very understanding, uh, and a lot of the things that I do in terms of that, uh, that zone build for the boys on fight day is a throwback from Costa's days, and it worked, and so I've continued it on for the boys. And there's very little activity in the dressing room. That's the business end of the final chapter of the business. So it's full steam ahead. That's what we do as it, for Tim's uh, benefit. It's the, it's the, it's the finale of all the training. So you can't really have a lot of distraction. But as I said, we're in a different place now, and Tim's uh, um, much better at dealing with outside distraction, and he's a, he's in control of his destiny. So I'm not putting any rules or any conditions on Cos. He can come and see us in the dressing room. He can he can participate in what we normally do, and if he has an input to it, I think that's a wonderful thing. And I'm even hopeful if he wants to that he walks out with us to the ring. He does have a front row seat. He's not an active member of the corner. So he will watch the fight from the front row. But I think it would be just wonderful. And I haven't even spoken to him about it. I'd like to eventually. But if that's what he wants to do, I'd be I'd be uh, ecstatic for him to walk out with us. Yeah, and to see that as well with Nikita as well, who has an official title. I think Tim officially called it Bucket Boy. But uh, <laughs> has that been upgraded? or, or where Oh, no, the sledge is going on, mate. The sledge <laughs> is always between them two. Nikita, well, it was funny. Uh, Cyclone Nikita crossed the lane in Florida at 7 o'clock last night. And Hurricane Costa arrived at 10 o'clock this morning, one following the other. They're going to get together to form a supercell and absolutely destroy Orlando, Florida on Saturday night. Yeah. So 
it's good sledge, mate. We're having fun with the whole process. But, yeah, I, we've got a great photo today. Um, myself, Tim, Kostya and Igor back together again. It's, it's great. We're really happy with it. That is awesome, and that is something we're looking forward to seeing on fight night as well. Uh, the only really hiccup in camp this week's obviously been the Cutman. What's the update with that? Have we locked someone in? Yeah, big shout out to Mark M and uh, one of our very important uh, inaugural long-time members of our team who sadly, um, I think I got the call at like one in the morning that he'd been rushed to hospital uh, for emergency surgery to remove his appendix the day before he was due to fly out with Nikita. So, Gambo, if you're watching, mate, we're we're all uh, we're all here. You're here in spirit, mate. I got um, a good mate, Joe Gamboy, from up in New York to fly down to, to to take that job for the night. And Joe's a good, quiet fella. He'll take care of the business. But we wish Mark was with us. But he's at home recovering. So all the best to you, Gambo. What's the venue like there? I uh, what would you compare it to in Australia? Is it Horde and Pavilion Sydney side, or like I mean that looks nice, but <laughs> but um, as far as the the fight room, I've I watched some footage of um, Jake Paul's fought in there before, and that's yeah. the one you can really see with the cameras. But it, it yeah. like a Horden or maybe a Gold Coast Convention Center is that? Yeah, it's <laughs> very similar. It's a beautiful convention center. I don't even know what the capacity is. I've not asked. So I got in there today because. It's one of those buildings that's multi-purpose and they can literally split it up into 20 or 30 oh, yeah. or one or two big ones. So I'm not sure what the capacity is, mate, to be honest, but it's a magnificent facility here. Oh, we're just spoiled rotten. Um, the irony is that this time last week, we were all cacking ourselves over Orlando getting blown away off the map. And 12 hours after it went through, it was like back to the beach. Yeah. I'm, uh, waiting for, I'm waiting for someone to pop in with a Mai Tai and just hand you a cocktail <laughs> or something. I like this. Well, I don't, I don't drink, mate, so I'll catch zero. I'll do. Thanks, <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. All right, let's just quickly chat about, um, obviously, Tim's fight is about to happen, and that is, without a doubt, the number one focus. But there is a bit of a roadmap, should he uh, be successful, which we're hoping yeah. he what sort of what's the ideal one for you? There are obviously the names that we speak about, Crawford, Spence, Fundora, and all that sort of stuff. But what is the most, the, like, the reality? What do you think is is next? Oh, look, it's a really, really interesting marketplace right now, the 154 is there. If you take those names, you take the Spence, the Fundora, Jamel Charlo, uh, Ramos, Erickson Lubin, um, you mix those up into the, the current run of guys at 154, there's any one of those Ted could be Tim's next opponent. But it really doesn't come down to who. It comes down to who's available and who's in a position and who wants to fight. I mean, the reality is we've got a guy that just wants to fight. Tim Zhu at elite level would still, if he had his way, want to fight four times a year. I've told him it's three maximum because we've got to do the camps properly because there are no easy fights. But there's a sense in the United States that some of these guys want to fight maybe once a year, maybe once every 18 months. So who knows where they are and where they're at. So what we do, Matty Rose and myself, sit down with PBC and present them with a list of options uh, going forward with some scheduled dates. And we say, look, we're in your hands. You go and see who's available, who we can get. And then we go into some discussion. So the guys that are currently available uh, that want to fight, Ericsson Lubin, um, Errol Spence wants a piece of it. Sebastian Fundora is happy to do a rematch. Just with those three alone is a year's work. Um, but currently, Spence and Fundora are scheduled to, to clash early next year. We'll take the winner of that. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, if there's somebody else that wants to put their hand up and they they are in that top 10 category, we'll, we'll look and take those. I mean, beauty of Tim Zoo is we're looking at three fights ahead where everyone else looks at one fight ahead. So while I can't give you a concrete name, I can tell you that Tim Zhu will be back in the ring very soon and he'll roll back in the ring very soon in 2025. God forbid any injuries would put a, a stall on that. Is Australia got a line through it at the moment or is it is US? No, is, nah, good. No, Australia doesn't have a line through it, mate. We um, we talk about it a lot, how, how good it would be to go back and do a blockbuster of, in the top five or ten guys in, in Australia. And that's being talked about all the time. So don't think for one minute that 
we can't do it, it'll come down to again, sadly, out of all those names, who can travel? Who's got a passport? Who doesn't have a felony record? All these things come into play that stop them from coming to Australia. And so then we have to flip over and go back to the US. Tim's future will be US based in terms of the majority of the fights will happen there. But should we get the luxury of being able to, with no limits, and PBC bring one to Australia? Absolutely, we'd love to. Yeah, that's awesome. I heard him say the other day, within maybe the next four to six weeks, he was going to buy a house and a car in the US. Has this gone across your desk? Absolutely. We've started that process of of, of Tim literally moving to the US. Uh, it makes sense based on what we've got ahead that he's going to be very busy. And it, if you look at it commercially, hiring and renting and all of that is a very expensive exercise. So there are better commercial options for me to look at for Tim. Already looking at some property, already looking at some cars. So we're, we're, we're moving ahead with it tentatively, of course, based on him continuing to win. But 2025 will most likely see him. It'll be a, a real smooth transition. It won't be a big announcement because he spent six months of this year here. Yeah. And he'll go back into camp next year in America. He just won't come back to Australia to live. And he'll certainly come back in between fights for a visit with family. Is that Vegas, do you think, he'll buy? Yeah, absolutely. We've got such a great team set up in Las Vegas today. Um, we've got split team boxing with Eric Ballinger, who's now a very important part of our team. We've got UFC um, with Tim down there working on strategic strength and conditioning. He's got... He knows the area. He knows the suburbs that we're, we're looking at, where all of his favourite food places are. His massage people are there. These recovery centres are there. So we're done in terms of looking... It's now a matter of finding the right property that him and uh, Alexandra can be comfortable and happy in, and um, and uh, and getting him getting him accustomed to living in America rather than travelling to and from. And it's got to obviously have a uh, three acre property with a tiny little cubby house down the back for Nikita, right? It's just <laughs> it's got to fit. No, no. <laughs> Tim said Nikita. The address will never be disclosed. <laughs> Maybe we, maybe he might consider for Nikita a treehouse down the back. Yeah, there you go. Uh, which I think Nikita would be wrapped with, to be honest. Um, oh, yeah. Been known it's to great for Nikita through. too, mate, because Nikita will get to to come and join us in camp over here, experience that next level sparring, working with his brother, working with our team in Vegas. So it can only be good for both of the boys. All right. Well, uh, that's as uh, close as uh, Inside Team Zoo I can get you guys today. So, Glenn Jennings, I appreciate, as always, uh, you're firing up the Zoom as you recline in a recliner in a resort on the other side of the world, just surrounded by – I've seen you wave to 20 people. I mean, Mai Tai, please. Mai Tai. <laughs> mocktail. The mocktail I've version. I've got to go back to work. I've got some more media staring at me through another door, so I'll get Costa and uh, Nikita onto some of those, mate. But uh, we'll talk again soon, mate, and uh, always a pleasure to catch up. Good on you, Jenna. I'll see you later, mate. Thanks, Dave, and see you, mate.